guys, and welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, as the title says above, is going to be me sharing with you guys my top eight favorite biblical fiction and Christian fiction reads from last year, 2018. I already did one on my top eight for 2018, which were non-fiction Christian reads, so you can click the on screen for that. But this one, I'm going to get into more of the fictional side, and um, I am a little bit relaxed. Today, I kind of pampered myself. I had a facial earlier. I washed my hair, even though I'm going to get my hair done, professionally done, in like two days. Um, so yeah, I washed my hair, so I'm going to just rock it curly for the next few days. I took a shower, I got my robe on, so I'm real comfortable right now. I'm finishing up my homemade iced coffee. I finally learned to make iced coffee, you guys, and... Uh, this is what I have left, it's so good, but let's get into this video, so it's not super long. And, um... These are not all the fiction novels that I read in 2018. I obviously read a lot of secular ones as well as Christian ones. But these are like my seven favorites plus an honorable mention because the eighth book is not, it really didn't get a five star rating for me, but it was still a good read um, considering it was the first book I've ever read about that um, biblical character. So I have them here and I think all of these I have purchased except for two so no except for three so all of these were actually purchased except for three of them and um the first few i actually read on ebook before i bought the physical copy so they're not going to be tapped up because i read them on my phone and i can actually show you guys so i am going to do a video all about my e-readers and the ebooks that i own but i did read these first four books i believe yes the first four books i did read on my phone through an app called moon plus reader what it is is i go on google and i just search um, you know, biblical fiction, any type of fiction book or any book that I want, I Google it and find where to get it, download it or pay for it, and then I use this app to um, read them. So I'm going to just go to my five-star reads, and um, these are the four books that I'll be mentioning that I read via e-reader and um, have physical copies of now. So the first one I have to share with you guys is Isaiah's Daughter by Misu Andrews, and this was actually the first biblical fiction novel I've ever read, um, the first Christian fiction novel I ever read. And um, you guys, if you've seen my previous video, you guys know I had like an issue. I had an issue previously with um, Christian fiction, only because a lot of Christian fiction was like Amish based, and I just didn't care for the Amish style, or they were like really historical, and I'm not into. Uh, that kind of his I don't know it was just I just didn't find uh, um, a love for it but then I ran across this Isaiah Zora by Misu Andrews and this was the first one I read this book I gave five stars it was so so good so this is the first book in the uh, Prophets and Kings series um, that she has and I loved it so much it follows I can never pronounce her name her name was Ishma but she got her name changed to Hifseba I'm probably saying it wrong, so I'm going to put it on the screen exactly what it is. And um, it's about the prophet um, Isaiah and King Hezekiah as a kid growing up. And um, it is just so beautiful. I loved it so much. I really loved the uh, way she interwove the various scriptures from Isaiah, from Kings, and from Chronicles. And um, I just, I loved everything about it. There was a cute little romance. I loved, I really, really loved learning about King Hezekiah as a kid. Um, when he was just a prince and how evil his father king ahaz was and his mother just irritated me so much um but yeah i i truly truly enjoyed reading this and i gave it five stars i think i have a written review for this on my blog so if i do have reviews for these which i should i'll even link down below so you guys can read those um but i don't want to give too much away just because i don't want to spoil it for anybody but if you're looking for a biblical fiction that talks about um any of the kings such as king um, hezekiah or about prophet isaiah this one is really really good because um this is basically what would have happened if isaiah had adopted a younger girl and um raised her as his daughter and then married her off to king hezekiah it's so beautiful 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 so i highly recommend this book the next one was is it's not biblical but it is historical christian fiction that is based off of a biblical story and i don't mind historical fiction that is based off of biblical um biblical stories if that makes sense um i don't mind that because i'm i feel like i'm still getting something from out of the bible just in a historical sense um i hope that just made sense if i, I don't know but yeah um so this was one that i've heard plenty of people raving about and i was like i don't want to read it but i read the back of it i was like you know what let me read it and 
this book will rip your soul out it will break your heart it will make you cry it will make you mad um it will give you all the fails in the world and i highly recommend it and that is redeeming love by francine rivers First of all, this is historical. Um, it is set in California Gold Country in 1850, and it is more of a um, story based. It's a retelling of the story of the prophet Hosea and his wife Gomer, and Gomer was a prostitute. And just about, um, you know, unconditional love, redemptive love, um, all-consuming love, and just everything above. And I loved everything about this. I love the setting. I love the backstory for Gomer. It was so, her name is not Gomer and here her name is Angel and um, Hosea's name would be Michael Hosea. Um, so Michael Hosea was such an amazing man. He was so amazing. I loved everything about this man. Um, he was definitely um, in tune with the Lord. He definitely had a, a, a true relationship with God and as far as Angel, her backstory, so it broke me i'm not gonna lie it broke me to pieces um and then watching her run away from love though she wanted love it was just so sad so many tears i cannot wait to reread these um books because i just need to read them in physical form so i can cry my tears on the pages but redeeming love is so good i highly recommend it um if you can get an ebook copy of it if you can get uh, um a physical copy of it however um we are going to be reading this actually a part of the book club for daughter of increase i think later on in the year so definitely join in with us on that and um yeah such a great book the third book is from one of my newest all-time favorite authors and her name is Tessa Afshar. i rave about her so much on my channel she is phenomenal in every aspect her writing the, the way she takes scriptures and creates these stories um the character development the quotes that you can really share the lessons that you get from the stories are just heart-wrenching they grip me they i i love her so much and um the first this this is probably my all-time favorite from all of her books um and that is pearl in the sand this is the story of rahab and salmon or solomon i don't know how to say it but it does feature um joshua and i loved it so much the story of Rahab, if you don't know, um, Rahab was there during the time of Jericho, and when Joshua sent the two spies to Jericho, she she's the one that saved them in her end, um, and basically made a deal with them to save her when they came back. They gave her a red ribbon to tie on the window, and um, pretty much she became one of God's chosen people when she joined the tribe. But, um, so amazing, like, so, so, so good. Um... And what I love is that she explains her book titles towards the end of her stories, which I love because a lot of people don't explain their titles. Um, you basically have to figure it out on your own, but she literally will explain her titles in her story, like in the last few chapters. And Pearl in the Sand is amazing because the whole idea is um, if you drop a pearl in a sand or if you drop pearl in a mud or you drop pearl anywhere, if you drop anything um, like a, a jewel somewhere, and dirt the question is is it still precious is it still um beautiful is it still something you want to cherish and most of the time you know some people don't believe that but in this case the pearl was something um very special and i'm not going to get into too much detail about it but the pearl was very special to um rahab and she had dropped it and she learned a lot about god's love and about um just being open to love and just loving who she was because we all know she was a prostitute but this one this story goes um into a little bit of a different aspect of her being a prostitute um it gives a little bit of background story and it is such heartbreaking situation with her family and just <laughs> i don't want to rave on about it too much because i have other books here but this is literally my all-time favorite book from tessa afshaw this is probably my number one um second would definitely be redeeming love but this i just it and I did start reading it, but I, I stopped myself because we are also going to be reading this, I think, in a few months, actually, for book club with Daughter Up Increase. So I stopped myself from reading, rereading it. But um, I, I truly, truly, truly love this story so much and highly, highly recommend this. It's so good, especially if you're wanting to know more about Rahab. Definitely check this out. It's so good. I do find sometimes that I do kind of confuse, like the scriptural parts versus the fictional parts. But, you know, it's still good. It, so good so good so i do highly highly out of all these books highly recommend this one pearl in the sand is amazing by tessa afshar 
Moving on to the fourth one, and it is also by Tessa Apshaw, and this one is in the field of grace. This is obviously, if you guys can't tell, the story of Ruth and Boaz, and it features Naomi, and it's beautiful, and I love it. And, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. It's the story of Ruth and Boaz, and, um, you know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful in every way. And what I love the most, I think, is um, the background story we get on Boaz, because we always know that Boaz is older than Ruth. Um, through actual scripture he is older than her but this one gives um, a different kind of view of him and how much older he is and his backstory because in this he ends up um, having a wife previous to Ruth and he had kids but something went <laughs> it's just so much so much so much so much so much with this and I loved it so much loved it so much so in the field of grace by Tessa Afshar is the fourth book moving on to my fifth pick and this one is actually not biblical it is christian fantasy which i've never really cared to read i know that ted decker and tasca lee i believe that's her name tasca lee do a lot of um christian fantasy christian sci-fi books and i own them but i haven't read them so this was like my actual first introduction into christian fantasy and i'm not gonna lie i wasn't expecting much going into this um i was curious and this was the only book that was sent to me for review I'm sorry, no, it's not. This is one of the books that was sent to me for review. And um, I believe all of these were sent from the same company. Yeah, so the next three books I'm going to talk about were all sent to me from Bethany House for review. And um, this one intrigued me because, one, I am definitely a huge fan of fantasy and paranormal novels. My bookshelf behind me, um, this is more of my secular kind of fiction novels, whereas this one is um, my Christian sec um, Christian fiction and nonfiction. But most of the books on the shelves have to do with fantasy or paranormal or um anything like that. I, I love fantasy novels. I love magic. I love uh, just everything about fantasy worlds in general and fantasy reading, um, be it paranormal, be it high fantasy, epic fantasy, like dark fantasy. I love fantasy. So I was really intrigued on reading this and I read the synopsis, loved it, and you guys, I gave this five stars. I am so excited for the sequel that's going to be released soon because it is amazing. I'm hoping I can get my hands on that for review or I'm just going to purchase it because... Mm so good and i raved about this before but it is mark of the raven by morgan l bussey this is the first book in the ravenwood saga <sighs> love this so much love it so much i've tabbed it all the way up this follows lady celine who is the heir to the house of ravenwood and her family has a secret gift of dream walking and it also goes into i think his name is lord damien yes lord damien and he has a power that deals with um water i can't remember exactly what his uh, gift is called but it deals with water and um it's a lot of political drama there's a lot of family drama there's a lot of um references to scripture and god but they don't mention him as god i forgot what they they speak of him as but um oh my god i can't even tell you guys what they call it. i think they call it the light is what they call it in here um but i just i love the fantasy aspects of it it was amazing the action was amazing and the way this ended oh my gosh i cannot wait wait because literally the family drama and the political drama that is involved in this story is off the chain and um i feel like this this has potential to really be up there like up there with the really well-known secular fantasy books so i totally love this i cannot wait to read the sequel i just as a fantasy lover i i i stand behind this and support this book wholeheartedly wholeheartedly but yeah again this is mark of the raven by morgan l bussey and i loved it so much it is a christian fantasy Next, we are going to get into a series, but I have the first two books in the series because the other books have not been released yet. But um, I have also raved about this on my Instagram before, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram. If not, you should. It is Daughter of Increase on Instagram. But um, I love both books in this series so far, and I just, I love the series. I love the series so much that I bought the first trilogy that this author wrote because it featured one of the characters from this series. That's how much I love this series and um it's a light on the hill which is the first book in cities of refuge by connie lynn cassette and it follows the story of mariah and i love her so much basically mariah something happened in the previous series that she wrote um the previous series connie lynn cassette wrote was out of out from egypt or out of egypt um, i can't remember i think it's out of egypt i have this i actually did i showed you guys that in my um book haul but uh yeah she 
something happened with her. She had she was in Jericho. She got the mark of the Canaanite gods in her face, um, and it's just her dealing with that as an adult now and having to be married and you know love and family drama and it's it really dives into the whole idea of the cities of refuge and if you guys don't know i believe it's mentioned in numbers don't quote me but i believe the cities of refuge is mentioned in numbers and basically there were seven were there seven or six? Ooh, there were either six or seven cities that um god designated as cities of refuge for people who were considered manslayers basically if you accidentally killed somebody at this time um you could run to the city to have fair judgment because they also allow for blood avengers and basically say if you were um out washing i don't know washing laundry i don't know why i'm saying laundry but if you were out doing laundry um and you know there was a rock in your way and you picked the rock up and threw it and it accidentally like it wasn't on purpose but you accidentally hit somebody that you didn't see and that person died that person's relative now has the right to kill you because you killed them it's the blood avenger situation but um god made it where manslayers who were basically people who accidentally killed people could um run to the city of refuge and have a fair trial instead of being killed for an accident so um these this series is all about that and um I, it's, it's just so good the plot twists that that are involved in this the romance the beauty the drama the um the self-love that has to be developed within mariah it's just so good i love this series so much i highly recommend it I, highly 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 recommend this like this i'm not even gonna lie reading this book allowed me to want to learn more about cities the cities of refuge and um i'm actually going to be doing a really in-depth study on the cities of refuge because of this book because it really intrigued me so much um and you guys can see i tapped it up so i mean duh i loved it but um that is this book the seventh book is going to be the sequel to that in Shelter of the Most High. And this features the same characters from the first book, but it's going to follow different characters. So um, it follows one of the secondary characters in the first book who's related to the main character. And she's so beautiful and I loved it. And I gave it five stars. And I mean, read it. And it talks about another girl. So the main character for this is going to be Etienne and Etienne I'm probably saying his name wrong I feel like it's something else but I always say Etienne and I think it's Aton is how you say it but I always say his name is Etienne but Aton um who is from the actual previous first book and then it follows a pagan high priest's daughter named Sophia and it's all about Sophia really learning um who God is and stuff like that and also Aton coming to terms with things that took place in the first book and it shows Mariah and I'm so happy because things take place for Mariah and I just I love it so so much the romance is really sweet I love the family dynamics I loved the drama that still follows from the first book into the second book so I loved it so much just I can't wait for the third book because I just I need more and the series actually follows Mariah's family so I'm excited because Mariah is like my sister she's like a long distance relative to me or something like I love her so much so yeah this is the seventh book okay and the eighth and final book that I have to share with you guys was not a five star read this was a four star read but out of all the four star reads that I had from last year, this one actually intrigued me the most of the other ones. Um, and actually, I read other books from this author, which is funny to me. So, yeah. Um, and the other book, um, I'm not even getting to that. So the, the, the eighth book is going to be Delilah by Angela Hunt. This is the third book in the Treacherous, sorry, it's called the Dangerous Beauties um, series. And this one is Delilah Treacherous Beauty. First of all, this cover... <sighs> Do you see the cover? Do you see the green eyes with the purple and just the just the gorgeousness and the lip? Just mm. you guys, I have some a series I'm going to be working on, which is going to be a book to makeup series. Um, because I do want to start including makeup on this channel. I, like I said, I mentioned this before. I do miss wearing makeup. I haven't worn makeup in a minute. Um, just because I'm lazy and my brushes are dirty and I don't want to clean them. That's terrible being that I'm a freelance makeup artist, but I want to do a book to makeup series because a lot of these Christian novels, um, biblical fiction books are gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is definitely one that I want to do. 
But, um, yeah, this one is the story of Delilah and Samson, and I didn't give it a five stars because it wasn't all that intriguing, but I did enjoy the story because I don't read many things about Delilah or Samson, and, um, I actually did watch the Bible on, um, Netflix, and the story of Samson and Delilah was actually the most intriguing to me, but, um, yeah, this was interesting enough that I purchased a physical copy of it, and I want to reread it physically. I did read this via, um my nook i don't even know where that is it's down here i did read this e on an ebook and um i enjoyed it but not enough to give it five stars but i definitely enjoyed it enough to purchase a physical copy and to read it if that makes sense um which is funny because i read the first book in this series called esther and i also gave that one four stars as well but i purchased the second book because i have yet to read the second book i read the first book and then jumped straight to the third book um but i'm going to read the second book probably next month and the second book is on beth sheba beth sheba um, and I own that one, so I'm probably gonna just order Esther and reread it anyways, who knows. But, um, yeah, Delilah for book number eight. So, those are the eight top books that I read. Eight top books, the top eight books from 2018 that are Christian and biblical fiction novels that I enjoyed. And I am excited to see what I have coming for 2019 because so far I'm reading a lot of things. And I hope and pray that my <laughs> list for this year is not going to be full of Tessa Afshar because I am obsessed with her. Uh, I, I love her writing. Her writing is so amazing. Her books always get me. I've literally given all of her books five stars except for one. One of them I gave four stars, but the other ones that I've read, I gave five stars. I still have to read two more books from her, so we'll see. We will see if most of her books get a five star rating out of me. But um, yeah, that is it for now. Again, I did read other books, obviously, but these were like my top eight from 2018. And um, if you guys want to keep up with the books that I read, you can follow me on Goodreads. I did make a complete separate Goodreads account that's specific for Dora of Inquiry. So you can just check down below to follow me on that. Um, you can basically keep up with the books that I'm reading and what my thoughts are on the books as I'm reading them. Currently, I am reading A Fire and Lines. Thank God I have it sitting here. But I have an arc of A Fire and Lines by Misu Andrews. And I've heard that this is supposed to be the sequel to Isaiah's Daughter. But I'm not sure because it doesn't say on the book. So I don't know. This follows um, the prophet Daniel. It talks about King Nebuchadnezzar and King. There's another king. I can't even name his name. What is his name? It talks about King Nebuchadnezzar. It talks about other kings that I can't remember right now. It talks about, uh, what's the name? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So yeah, and it's taken from the perspective, mainly the perspective of daniel's wife but it also features daniel's perspective as well so yeah i feel like this is book two in the prophets and kings but i'm not sure but yeah um that's what i'm currently reading and then i'll also be diving into healing hearts by sarah and eden and the, i mentioned this before in the haul that i shared um i don't know if this is christian or not because sometimes it pops up as a christian romance sometimes it doesn't i know that it's western but i'm not sure if this is like christian so i'm gonna have to read this and see for myself if there is um any kind of faith christian aspects in this book but um yeah that is it um and if you guys don't know the nail polish i'm wearing because i know a lot of you guys used to ask about the polishes and stuff so i like i said i had a very much pamper day i did my hair i took a shower i got clothes on underneath the robe i'm just comfortable right now in my toes so on my toes i just have on one of my favorite nail polishes ever from sally hansen and it is in gunmetal it is a beautiful just beautiful color I, I love this color so much this is definitely um a fall and winter kind of color for me i loved it um and then on my nails right now um as much as i love this color i hate the application of the polish but i think it's the brush but i have on opi and this one is i believe in manicures and I pick up my OP, OPI from um, different websites, and I also pick them up from my local Rite Aid. My local Rite Aid sells SC OPI and um, China Glaze. They're a little expensive. They're like $9, 10 a bottle, twelve fifty a bottle, but um, I snag them when they're having sales or deals. But um, yeah, I am wearing this on my nails and this on my toes. And I did that because I have to dance this Sunday. So yeah, y'all yeah, probably not going to see this video till Tuesday sorry but um by the time you see this i danced on sunday which is why i did all this stuff so that is it um yeah that's it so i'll see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>